Hey everyone, welcome to Mythology Explained. In today's video, we're going to discuss Scientology, specifically a portion of the scriptural narrative that was previously only known to higher ranking Scientologists, but has since become public knowledge on account of former adherents leaving the church and uploading secret information online. This information, which most people find outlandish and outrageous, has been the impetus for a great many Scientologists abandoning their faith, as what is learned is judged too far-fetched and ridiculous for the continuation of conviction in Scientology. The Church of Scientology tried to have this information scrubbed from the internet, claiming it to be proprietary, but ultimately none of the lawsuits were successful, as no suitable reason was identified to warrant the imposition of an injunction that would have removed the scriptural narrative of Scientology from the public sphere. As a secondary attempt at suppression, the Church of Scientology claims that any leaked information is inauthentic, both fabricated and false. Let's get into it. Unlike other religions, religions that have been around for either hundreds or thousands of years, like Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, or Buddhism, the religion of Scientology doesn't make what is said in its own scripture freely available for anyone to read and consider. And by anyone, I don't just mean the uninitiated, as in people who don't subscribe to Scientology, I mean most of the followers within the religion itself. You see, information and training are doled out within the Church of Scientology depending on where you rank within the church's hierarchy. The purported reason behind this system is to protect people from information that would be harmful to them until they've gone through sufficient training and conditioning to fortify the mind, which is to say until they've ascended through the ranks, investing substantial amounts of money and countless hours of their time. When someone first joins Scientology, they're known as pre-clear. Then, after extensive auditing and training, after all of their engrams, which are basically traumatic memories and painful emotions, have been stripped away, they become clear, a term that refers to those who have supposedly extricated themselves from their reactive minds, specifically from all of the negative effects of the reactive mind. People who have achieved this enlightened state are said to maintain mastery of their mental energy, meaning they can control their thoughts and emotions to such a degree that they can easily overcome situations that previously would have created difficulties for them. After obtaining clear status, the next goal of spiritual development is to become an operating Thetan. The purpose of auditing, one of the pillars of Scientology, is to extricate oneself from engrams, specifically from painful and traumatic memories. These memories may not be known to the conscious mind, but regardless, they impede the conscious mind, existing as obstacles that preclude people from manifesting their optimal, unburdened selves. Once free of engrams, a person is said to be clear. At this point, the next step is to progress through the eight levels of OT training. It has been claimed there are many more than eight levels of OT training, but critics say these don't really exist exclusively functioning as a dangling carrot used to continuously entice people to commit more and more money and time. Once every level of OT training is completed, a person becomes an operating Thetan, meaning not only are they free of engrams, but they've also harnessed and channeled the full potential of their Thetan, the spiritual being that exists inside of them. Basically, a Thetan is Scientology's conceptualization of the soul. Part of the process of becoming an operating Thetan is extrication from body Thetans, Scientology jargon for disembodied spirits. These spirits, though deprived of a proper physical form over which they have control, are attracted to people, crowding around the living as moths crowd around a flame. These body Thetans were created when Xenu, a galactic overlord, killed hundreds of billions of people with nuclear bombs going on to capture all of their souls, meaning all of their Thetans, using an electric ribbon. These captured Thetans were then released and became body Thetans when they drifted towards living people. We're going to spend the rest of the video discussing the Xenu narrative, 
a secret story within the grand mythos of Scientology that's the main part of OT3 training, which is known as the Wall of Fire. To justify withholding the information of OT3, the church explained that those who had not trained sufficiently would die of pneumonia if exposed to such potent information prematurely. In 2013, the cost of OT3 was just under $9,000. According to L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of the Church of Scientology, Xenu was the ruler of a galactic confederacy that existed 75 million years ago. This confederacy spanned 26 stars and 76 planets, one of which was Tigyak, which we now know as Earth. The civilization of this vast and ancient alliance of stars and planets was uncannily alike to that of the 1950s and 1960s with people sporting similar clothes as well as using familiar modes of transport, such as trains, planes, boats, and cars that looked like those used by humanity in the middle of the 20th century. Xenu was a tyrant facing deposition, so he contrived a plan to resolve overpopulation across the confederacy by exterminating hundreds of billions of people. Assisted by psychiatrists, Xenu gathered up hundreds of billions of people under the pretense of income tax inspections, allaying suspicions and, thus, pacifying the masses into compliance. These hundreds of billions of people were then frozen in a mixture of alcohol and glycol. In this state of stasis, all of these people were loaded into spacecraft and transported to the site of extermination, Earth, or as it was known 75 million years ago, Tigiak. The hundreds of billions of people transported were deposited around the bases of the largest volcanoes on the planet. Hydrogen bombs were then lowered into the mouth of each of these volcanoes and detonated simultaneously. Billions upon billions of people were eradicated instantaneously in a white hot flash, their souls severed from their bodies. Now, discorporate, all of these souls, called Thetans, blew away like many leaves in the wind. However, they weren't left to scatter across the stars, instead captured by an electric ribbon used by Xenu. Hundreds of billions of souls were sucked into vacuum zones, subsequently forced into super cinemas to watch a motion picture for 36 days on cosmic screens of colossal size. By being subjected to this process, the hundreds of billions of souls became implanted with what Hubbard called various misleading data, the sum of which is known as the R6 implant. Every world religion and all associated iconography is said to be the product of this implant. Specifically, Hubbard asserted that Catholicism and the image of the cross were products of this implant. Two implant stations, places where the R6 implant was primarily administered, are mentioned, one located on the Hawaiian Islands the other on the Canary Islands. Though hundreds of billions perished in the nuclear holocaust, not every person piled up at the base of the volcanoes was actually killed. After the R6 implant, the discarnate Thetans gravitated towards this group of survivors like metal filings to a magnet, attaching themselves to the survivors, becoming body Thetans. Later, an insurrection launched by another government faction overthrew Xenu and his most zealous supporters, imprisoning them in an electric mountain trap, where, even today, Xenu and his cohort of ardent acolytes remain incarcerated. The Pyrenees Mountains were proposed as the location that harbors this electric mountain trap. However, this mountain range was actually described by Hubbard as the location of an ancient Martian report station. Following the nuclear volcano explosions, the cosmic movie theater memory implantation, hundreds of billions of brainwashed spirits being released back into the universe, an insurrection executed by some space confederacy faction, and Xenu's imprisonment in an electric mountain trap, Tigyak, a planet we would come to know as Earth in contemporary times, was abandoned by the confederacy, becoming ostracized, relegated to a prison planet which it still remains to this day, despite several alien incursions over the last 75 million years. In order for people to continue along the journey across the bridge of total freedom, 
which is essentially a metaphorical representation of advancement through the Church of Scientology. The Xenu narrative must be learned and embraced. If it is felt that someone didn't adequately absorb the Xenu narrative, their advancement can be impeded until they do, meaning they have to spend thousands of dollars of their own money to take the course again. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. As always, leave your video suggestions down below.